So we've got some paint on the palette still. Might as well do a painting. Might as well do a painting. So I've got this picture. I've actually painted this in gouache before. It's one that I took when I was in the Lake District. I've uh, got like the mountains and the light. A centralised light. Because a lot of the time you get light just going one way or the other. But this has got like a central lighting. Which I quite find I find it quite interesting and it's sort of backlighting some trees as well. So you have light coming around the outside of the trees. So I'm gonna use that as my reference. And I might change things and make things more dramatic. <laughs> drama! We need sometimes we need drama. Yes. Why do we need drama in our paintings? Because we're creative. We're being creative. We don't have to paint exactly what we see. We don't have to paint exactly what we see because exactly what you see is not what you always want to paint. You might look at it and go, hmm, oh, that's looking a bit drab, isn't it? Looks a bit boring. But then, with a little bit of drama, we can make that boring, drab image into something a bit more, you know, with a bit more pizzazz, a bit more grandness. <laughs> uh, in my own little mind, anyway. In my own head, I can make it grand and magical and brilliant and I can use brush strokes to make it come alive almost. In reality, it probably is still drab, but I think it's great. <laughs> so the first thing I need to do, I need to wipe a few brushes because they've been just stuck in oil. So I have some oil with uh, oil of cloves and uh, I just leave it in there and the brushes never dry out so it keeps them nice and moist. <laughs> it's a funny word isn't it? Anyway I'm, I'm on one today. I'm feeling excited because I've got a dramatic picture to paint and uh, I've given myself complete, complete openness to do whatever the hell I like. So, um, oops, if you watched the last episode, you saw I was very impressionistic, which is really, honestly, the way I like painting the most, with like expressive brush strokes. And, uh, but anyway, here's a palette of colours, just in case. You can use whatever colours you want, don't feel like you have to use these because, let's face it, any colour could be mixed. If you've got a, say, an ultramarine blue, a cad yellow, a lizard and crimson, and a white, and a burnt umber, you can pretty much mix everything um, like that. But we won't go into that too much, colour mixing, because it's just most colour mixes I tend to do, <laughs> I go, oh, let's make a little bit of a purple, like this, and then I'll go, mm, yeah, a little bit redder, a bit redder, and then a little bit of brown, and a little bit of white. And I'll go, well, that's my cloud colour, that's my deep cloud colour. Um, the more you mix paint and match it, the better you get at it. So practice mixing colours and then paint the painting. I wouldn't, if it was me, <laughs> and I was learning to paint, if you're a complete beginner or you're thinking, I think I'm better than I actually am, I'm going to go a bit further on here and uh, then my advice would be don't mix those squares. <laughs> I found it a waste of time for myself. I mixed 
a, like a, a canvas full of squares, and I was like, well, I haven't learned anything. <laughs> <laughs> so I made, did a painting instead. I learned a lot more. So uh, that's just me. It's just my own advice. So let's start painting this. I'm, like I said, I'm mixing like this cloud colour look. Similar, isn't it? This has got a bit darker there, but it's about that. It's very close. So we'll wax some paint on. Oh, what I could do with this, do any bit of chalk first, actually. Let's just have a go at doing our design, because we might change it, like I said. Uh, I like the idea of a bit more of a mountain that goes off like that. A bit more strength, like that, yeah. A bit like that, and then we've got this, we've got our light down here, haven't we? Right. Oops. No! I dropped my chalk into some crimson. <laughs> Otherwise I'll have a red finger. I don't want a crimson a lizard and crimson hands. God. Beginning of the disasters. Yeah, and then we've got light clouds here. And it sort of goes off like that and then and then we've got there is a uh, sort of a hill here which we can dramatise a bit more. Maybe it can go like that. Yeah, like that. That can sort of fall away. And then we've got this here, which is the. We're going to put this in front of that, like this. Like this. Straighten that off a bit, like that. Um, give that a bit more of a. Yeah. A bit more of a drama, the light there, and we've got our tree, got some, I quite like the way this is though, and then we've got our trees, and then we've got a tree there, like that, and then we've got a bit of a path type of thing there, so there we go, that's the, uh, that's the painting, done it. Might as well uh, pack everything away now. <laughs> so that's basically the idea. So uh, let's go back to it. Uh, that's to me. I'm not too worried about um, if the colours are not fully mixed. Sometimes I actually prefer it when they're not um, fully mixed and you get changes in colours. Changes, yes. We like changes. We don't want it to be... I don't like it to be the same everywhere. The same everywhere is a bit boring. So something I used to do when I first started oil painting is I blended everything. <laughs> I would blend and blend and blend and uh, everything was just blended and to be honest over blended and I don't do that anymore. That's something I've kind of grown, grown out of blending and you'll, you'll find uh, well, depending on how you want, like painting, really. I, uh, because I'm a bit more brushstrokey as a painter, I prefer to uh, just get get the paint down on the canvas and then uh, and be happy and leave it where I used to. Uh, I used to be very nicky about my brush strokes and I mean my blending and 
I would I would never accept <laughs> I would never accept things. I would always overwork things and overdo it and it just doesn't I don't know why that I I used to do that really. I think it was just experience with the materials I suppose. sort of think about the next layer and the next layer if the, the mountains would go quite darker just so we can see them yeah what was I saying <laughs> over blending yeah I think when you when you first start oil painting um, for me personally I was so focused on trying to get everything perfect <laughs> Which makes me laugh now, because I that's impossible for me, because I'm not the perfect painter. I'm a messy painter, and that's uh, just the reality of my type of painting. And you've got to realise what kind of a painter you are. Are you a detailed, technical painter? Is that what your interests are, or are you brushstrokey and expressive, and you want like? painting to be like that or do you want it to be crisp and sharp like a uh, a well painted Dutch master it all depends on what you like isn't it I've always been uh, myself I've always admired impressionists and painters that were able to just throw paint at the canvas and create these great effects like Turner. I tell you, one of my favourite painters, unbelievable, unbelievable. I must have mentioned him a million times. Is uh, Sir Alfred Munnings? Unbelievable. Just amazes me that the the uh, skill level. Because it, it's kind of like the way I like to paint, but. The ability of painting horses in the, at that level, I mean, it's just amazing. It amazes me every time I look. <laughs> every time I look at the, the, the work, I'm like, God, if only I was as good as that. <laughs> How does someone get that amazing? One day, eh, one day, keep practicing. That's all I can say to myself, keep practicing, you get there. A bit darker here. And you can choose whether you want it to be more blue or more... Or more red or more grey. Just create that shape there. I like that difference here as well. So you can move the paint that's already on there, give it a uh, mix around, <laughs> change things as you go. Get a little bit of blue, a little bit of brown, a bit of storm in the sky. Just always sitting back, having a look, checking it out. Are you happy? Happy, happy, happy. Um, I'm pretty happy actually with what's going on so far. In some white with a tiny bit of Naples yellow. I'm going to brighten this up here. I'm not going for 
pure white. I want that Naples yellow hint. Quite a lot of paint. Don't skimp on your paint. Oh, what I need. So don't skimp on the paint because if you haven't got the paint on your brush, you aren't going to get any paint on your canvas. <laughs> we know this, we know this, why are you saying that? So I'm say I always want to say things for beginners because I've been in, I've been there, done all the mistakes that you can do, so I like to uh, try and help versions of myself. <laughs> People like me that have never been to art school and never been trained or anything, so we learn as we go. It's a little bit different to someone who's been, you know, Someone's held their hand and said, do this, do that. Where some of us that have learnt from nothing, we have to we have to really sort of go, well, I'll try this out and see what happens. <laughs> I'm not saying it's bad that people have been to art school and stuff. It's something I wish I did myself, but it's just a different way of learning, isn't it? You learn, you still learn. It's just a different way, it's more trial and error rather than uh, do it like this. I'm liking this. We need a bit of light here and there. Just break up this colour. Spin the brush sit back. Not quite enough light there I don't think I need it needs to be a bit more break that away. Break that away like that. Yeah I quite like that. Breaking that up a bit. Happy, happy, and pretty happy. So, we'll move on. I want like a bluey colour. <laughs> My palette is a mess. It is a mess. But I'm after like a bluey, a light bluey colour. Let's throw it in this. around too much. So we've got our lightest uh, hills. And if you were uh, sort of when you're pushing in to the colour that's behind it, it kind of blends away a little bit so you get a soft edge. Because that's kind of what you want because it's quite far away, you don't want it to be too, you don't want it to be a really hard, horrible edge. Hmm. Well, this is a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I'll uh, bring this down then. Mm -hmm. 
then take that to the left. And then we've got to start to get more depth and colour in this where we're going to mess around a bit. If I uh, get a little bit more blue and red, I can indicate some changes in colour but without doing that much in there. Yes, very happy. So there's two things I want to do now. I want to get some dark in here to bring this forward, get some dark on this side. Um, so we'll get some more of this. Let's get some more wee. Are we all the blue? Bit the old blue, bit the old crimson, a bit more of the blue. Bit of the brown, is that? Yeah, burnt umber. Bit of the old homemade burnt umber. <laughs> it's almost like honey, is that? That I've made myself. But it works. It works, so I'm happy. So we'll try this, it might be too dark, but we'll try it anyway. Might help that it's dark though, might it? So we get a bit more change. in with this. Yeah, changes, changes we like. I'm liking this, so uh, we could do with a bit of a greeny colour. I want to get, while I've not got much paint on, sort of bring that together there. Almost like it kind of melts into this. See how that kind of melts in and it goes to that. Just a uh, bit of a but then I still want to keep that, um, that quite sharp there. Give that a bit of a green. So I want like this greeny colour now. Bit of the uh, chromium oxide and a little bit of yellow. I want to test it on this. Yeah, it needs to be a bit more redder. Bit of the crimson in there. Probably should have got some yellow ochre really. Way, way, way too green. Put the brown in it. This isn't bad. It's uh Just for, <laughs> I wanted to do this dark bit here. I just threw into some dark there. 
then I might lighten up behind those trees actually. Make the trees pop out a bit more. Let's just see what that looks like. We can get a uh, light on top of it, so it doesn't matter too much. These trees are going to be really dark, so just for uh, for the purpose of the fact that those trees are going to be there, I'm going to lighten it a little bit. I'm using a bit of Naples yellow now, a bit of Naples yellow and white. Getting quite a nice colour. Yeah, the Naples yellow and white and a bit of red. We're getting quite a nice faded green, which is what I wanted originally. See how I'm following the uh, the land. Some of this burnt sienna and white without even uh, cleaning my brush mixed in with that greeny colour just threw burnt sienna and white in it to get some of this this light colour that's hitting some of these cracks and crags and whatever <laughs> Try not to blend too much, you know, get these different areas, different colours. Still following the uh, contours, a bit of the old Naples yellow in it there. Maybe get some light in there. Faded and I like that. Um, it's a little bit back here as well. Use my finger to blend it away. Shape it and remember to use your use your brush. Use your brush to create these um, shapes, and then uh, use your brush like this to go from, or use it like that to do these lines. So I've got some light hitting some of those areas now, which is good. Maybe there's a bit of light hitting there as well. Blend it away again. While my brush has got paint on, I'm going to start 
adding stuff in this dark. So you can uh, put stuff in dark areas by using paint when your brush has been used a bit. Playing with uh, dark and light. Like that. Uh, might have a bit dark there. Liking the veins. Got a nice on the original picture. It's got this nice light there. Now, I think that's a bit too far off here. Wouldn't that be cool with that shun right there instead? So I might make a really bright area like that because I have seen. Uh, let's get some more green on this. This will make it stand out more now. A darkish area first. See how we're building it up with different colours. It's never really the same. Like red as well. Gonna have this nice warm, bright yellowy color. So I think it's like a cad yellow with some burnt sienna and a lump of white. A bit more of the yellow, maybe a bit of crimson. Yeah, so we're going to have our light in this part instead of that part, so it's going to go and then kind of fade out there, maybe it can go like this. So when I was actually out painting for real, I've seen a strip like this before, except uh, it was a really nice green, really, really, really nice green as well, really bright, kind of a green that you wouldn't expect, <laughs> you know when you see the green, the real bright green, and if you mix that colour you think, well, it's probably not going to be real, probably never going to see a green as bright as that normally, but amazing what you do. change it a little bit of the old browns and greens and give it some dull around it that way
I'm using uh, mostly chromium oxide as my green. It is a uh, really good landscape colour, but you could use sap green. It doesn't really matter, to be honest. Yeah, so that's given us a nice brightness. And maybe we can, uh, I feel like I could stretch it off like this. Then we've got a change in uh, ground where it's a bit more browny colour. Sit back, have a look. Create a break there. Not easy, you can make changes, you see. Making changes. I like doing stuff like that where you can uh, quickly change something. So we need some trees. do I just want to do it I'm like god I want to do this quick I want to enjoy it I don't want to be hanging about thinking about my next stroke but you know you want to take your time that is what you should be doing but as I'm filming myself I've got to like think about people watching and probably won't want to watch for hours <laughs> Well, you got you got your whole lives to lead. You've got things to do. And uh, let's have a look. Let's sit back, have a look. It's coming on quite nicely, actually. We need them trees, though, don't we? So I'm mostly using this one brush. Use a bit of the two blues. Let's have a look at this. Two blues and the green. Is that dark enough? Not really, is it? Let's get some brown in it as well. Brown, green, and blue. So blue and brown makes black. You probably already know that. And you can make some amazing greys as well, bluey greys. Warm greys, cool greys. Right, we've got a tree. 
right there. Blip right there it is. So we'll uh little diddle 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 just bring that in. Yes. And uh have another one there. Have him a bit taller, shall we? Not quite as uh, bulky. He hasn't been working out as much as that tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what we might do actually. Let's uh, get a smaller brush. a lighter colour, a lighter green, and we can uh, give it a little uh, hint of light in the outside of it, as if the light's sort of going around the tree that is. So we've got a bit of light on the around the tree. Uh, maybe there's a bit of light breaking through there as well. Plant them a bit there. Um, we'll leave that like that. We want to be a bit darker there because it would be not hitting much. Sunlight would be breaking that, would they? That'll do. Just use my finger there. Right, now, we'll do the same, some more trees over here. I'll put in a few, uh, one there, one there, one there, one there, one there. La -de -de -de. Yeah, let's have a few. We'll have loads. Maybe we'll just do the old uh, locking in method. We'll lock it all in. Get a lot more paint on because it's uh, needs to be a bit darker than it is. Just sort of sit back, have a look at that. Yeah, something like that. To uh, make these trees a bit better. Let's 
And then we we'll use a bit of my greeny colour just to uh, pick a few of these out and put a little bit of a backlight on them. Don't need to go too crazy. So let's sit back, have a look at that. Not a bit more than that one. And then I was gonna. So this is. So it will go down More dark. So sit back, have a look at that. So I've got a mass now, trees. I quite like that actually. I need to um, just make it obvious that that comes in front of that. Sit back, have a look. Felt like it needed to be a bit darker in places. Um, so I want this, I was going to have it as a path type thing, um, rather than a, a river. A nice place to walk, wouldn't it? Um, with a uh, sort of a greyish colour. A few rocks and stuff in there. Bits of grass that are catching a bit of light now and then.
Yeah. Quite like that. What do I need to do? When I sit back, I see like a, a lack of separation there, so a little bit dark there. Separates it more, it looks a lot better to me. I can just pull that in just to soften it a bit. Yeah, I like that. I think I'm about done. Maybe have a bit of green in there. I throw in all the colours all over because then uh, you get a bit more of a um, balance in the painting. So that works quite nicely. Um, got that nice glow there which works now. Now it's sort of behind there. Um, there's certain bits I could highlight a bit more. I will do um, just to add that extra extra bit the old uh, Naples yellow and white and we'll uh, I want to get this maybe a little hint a little bit too bright actually I might tone it down a touch So I've got a nice light there now, a bit lighter than it was, um, which works good, works nice. in there, in there, here and there. Yeah. I mean, I could keep going. You could always go and go and go, can't you, with a painting? You can uh, go on forever. I want a bit of this colour in that as well. You could you could really just go on go on and on and on, <laughs> and uh, and that's up to you when you decide to finish. You you decide to finish. That's when you want to finish.
But yeah, I think I'll call this one finished. I had any, enjoyed doing this painting and uh, I'm feeling like putting a bird in it. <laughs> a little bird. Why not? What if there was a bird flying? A great big eagle or a dragon <laughs> flying there going It's got a bit of a beast in it. <laughs> Maybe there's another one that's there. And another one there. Not quite as big. And a few there. You always get them when you get them in groups, don't you? A flock of birds. Gonna get rid of that big one there. fix mistakes. I don't really like that one now. I'll leave it like that I think. Got a few birds there. What an angle needed I think like that. Yeah. Maybe there as well. You can leave them out. If you don't want birds in your painting leave them out. I just wanted a few. So there we go. Thanks very much for watching this episode hope you enjoyed it and i hope it gave you an idea on what you could do with your paints so thanks very much for watching and i'll see you another one cheers bye